All right, not so hot on the heels of this particular room, kicking our butt more times than I would care to uh, care to recount. We're going to take a slightly different approach, but before we do that, we have to familiarize ourselves a bit with the uh, with our current hero selection. So our our bard has uh, has switched colleges and is now a College of Lore Bard, as opposed to being a uh, College of Valor Bard. I think the increased damage from uh, Bardic Inspiration was exciting to me, but it, it didn't seem to pan out, and there were some bugs with its uh, visual presentation. So I went ahead and made some changes. There are some noteworthy things like College of Lord Bars, College of Lore Bards, rogueliness as well but i found that that ranger was a pretty impressive power spike for him in terms of his flexibility so still rocking a lot of sleight of hand still our main thief among other things uh, although not not quite as good as they as they were previously we're at eight stealth and eight sleight of hand i think those were higher before not college of lord I uh, cannot wear any uh, medium armor, so we had to go back down to light armor, and we also couldn't wield a shield. I think it was mainly our boots that changed, so I gave, uh, I gave our protagonist here uh, the boots of speed to give us a bonus action dash, which might come in handy for just kind of like mobility purposes. And then I also retooled our spells to be a bit more crowd control focused, so, you know, switching in... Fear, which is a surprisingly strong spell, it seems, and uh, and a few other tweaks. Next up, and this is a big uh, departure, is uh, Asterion is now a ranger with uh, with a desire to shift into the world of uh, the number of attacks and the damage that we can pump out with Asterion, which hopefully I will be demonstrating in the not too distant future, is pretty interesting. I also went ahead and created like a little uh, a little pouch for all of the things we might want to use. So all of our like consumables live here. We have some poisons and those types of things. And then also we have this barrel, which is acting as our quiver for uh, for the purposes of, of gameplay. And we have a decent number of elemental arrows. Lazel uh, also had saw some changes. Mainly she has picked up the feat Sentinel which I think is an interesting one, and is now by default rocking Soro, which is a, uh, a halberd with extra reach, because Sentinel plus extra reach has some interesting dynamics to it, but she's also carrying a few extra weapons. So if we want, we can switch to uh, the Sword of Justice if we don't care so much about the extra reach, and that comes with a 2 AC buff in Tur's Protection that we can use. Uh... So that will be that will be potentially useful because that's essentially what you get from having a shield. Although if we want to go with a shield, we still have the faith breaker and uh, the wood woad shield. But one thing that I really like is that sorrow comes with sorrowful lash, which is a uh, surprisingly effective uh, extra bit of damage that we can do with our bonus action. And right now, Lazelle doesn't have a lot of uses for her bonus action. So this comes with a three meter pull and it can be used every turn. So, uh, so not too shabby. And, and then last but certainly not least, we have, uh, we have our high half elf cleric, Shadowheart, who has uh, taken on some heavier armor. So her AC is actually the highest in the party by default. Uh, she is rocking a shield. And I gave her Morning Frost, which is this uh, deep dark staff. I'm not sure that it's the best option here, but it, I think it is interesting being able to apply chilled. Affected entity is vulnerable to cold damage and resistant to fire after it is applied. So we can get some interesting extra damage out of that. So anyways, with that summary done, we have we have a few things to do. So first and foremost, apparently we had a quest here. So we can we can talk to this lady and this option here, bare feet I see, I nab these boots from a runaway gnome, yours perhaps. I don't remember this. I don't think I have any boots in my inventory, but when I click it, never thought I'd see these back. Nasty sneak gave even Gek the slip. 
So we are we're solving the barefooted uh, drow problem. Crafty little shits, these ones. You need a stiff cane to keep them in line. She's very pleasant. I look forward to killing her. <laughs> That's all I have to say on the matter. Here then, his bounty's yours. Now move. I've got no time for the parasite stirs, but it's a mere tickle. You hear no thoughts or memories. Just an echo of scars that never healed. A true soul, eh? Useless wreck of a lookout could have told me. Glad you're here to take responsibility. Tunnels collapsed. Trapped true soul near. He's stuck in there with poisoned geezers. We don't get him out soon. It's both our heads. No need for that. Nears is the only head that matters to us. <laughs> Uh, okay, so there's a lot of things we can say here, but I think uh, I've got explosive powder, and that should do the trick. That's so. Set it near the rubble and ignite it. That'll blow the drow out. Yes, but we're not going to do that right away. So first of all, for the boots, we get this reward. Um, this uh, bracer band is after shoving an enemy, the wearer gains plus one to their armor class until next turn. It's kind of interesting, but I think this armor of uninhibited Kashigo is perhaps more interesting, especially if we want to go with a monk. So we'll we'll grab that. Uh, and now what we're gonna do Swift as my feet can is we are gonna we're gonna work our way to this room. So there's definitely some capacity for us to do some some wrecking out here in the uh, in the greater area before we uh, before we get to work on the rest. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to deal with, and it's going to take a, uh-oh, I've, I've got myself caught, but we need to, we need to deal with this, uh, this all-seeing eye that, that has a tendency to follow us around, uh, aka the scrying eye, and I, I have found in, in a little bit of testing that the best way to handle it is to, uh, to give it a, a gentle shove. <laughs> um, and just uh, just send it. Yeah, the, you gotta get the you gotta get the angles right. But once you do, see now I have learned this is, this is an important detail. Blue means it's a go. Red, which you saw before, means that the action will fail. So now what we want to do? We do want to do this while no one is uh, is watching. So we're gonna let this person wander off. So they're out of eye shot. And then we're just gonna send this uh, this eye into the void. Have a wonderful life, eye. All right. Now this person's walking back by and they're like, eh, no big deal. No what did, what did I miss? These boots have seen everything. Now this is, I, I found this to be the best place to kind of start our clear of this particular area. And I'm going to try to do this with minimal expenditure. It's my my goal is not to, uh, no, never mind. not to radically overextend in these Let's early fights. So what we're going to do is we're going to lure as many people over as we can to this area. Good that we got a successful performance check there. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of looting. From a, from a pickpocket perspective, since these, these folks are going to die regardless. So our, our goal here is, is simply to, uh, to make sure that... What am I to do? I think, I think we catch this person too. I think she's going to hear it. Hey, you're pretty good. There we go. Yep. So this will get all four people, and then we can do a little bit of uh, a little bit of plunder. And if we end up getting into a fight, we end up getting into a fight, and we were planning to anyways. Oh, well, that's not great. The place that she walked to is a little uh, a little awkward. So let's see, how are we going to fix this? We, we may have a hard time. So I, I can stop. We could enter turn-based mode and stop. 
stop or we could we could stop playing the music and then enter turn based mode when everyone turns around and see if we can get an angle. Someone there. But it may be a little tricky. So we may we may just have to accept that we're not gonna be able to uh to loot folks. Or we could enter turn based mode and we could use one of our fog clouds. I don't care too much about Asterian's uh Let's uh, let's try this out. This will be interesting. Okay, so we we enter the we're in the fog cloud now. So we are going to now is hiding or pickpocketing is a primary action or a secondary action? I always forget. This is this is where I'm going to mess things up. There we go. All right. So we can't be seen here. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do some work. So most of these are are very low and with advantage. We would have to roll double ones to fail on these. So we're we're definitely we're definitely risking a little bit here just because we're get, we're not going to get our first action out of surprise. But we'll uh, we'll see. But yeah, most of these like this plus three from the two. Hey, treasure plus three from the two means that literally only double ones causes us to fail here. So we can go ahead and plunder. And the thing of note is if we just killed this guy, we would not get all the goodies. So we'd get some of the goodies. This one we could technically fail. But but the, the real challenge is going to be to see if we can get the, uh, the cash out of this guy. Have to roll 17. Hey, we get it. All right, cool. So with that done, we can we can start to move ourselves around. Now, I don't know how much the fog is going to mess with with us. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see. I think people are going to start walking this way when we let the environment turn happen. So this is, is going to be very interesting actually. Um <laughs> Like well be this is uh, this is not something that we have tested out previously, but let's uh, there is work to do. let's give it a go. Okay, so we did. So this is interesting. We did actually lose. We did actually lose it, but this is... We can jump up here and we can stealth, but I think we're better off just stealthing. And then... And then wreaking havoc. So this will be the first opportunity for Asterion to demonstrate why I have, uh... Why I have swapped him over. You attacked someone. Only the guard. Oh, don't, don't whiff on me now, Asterion. All right. Oh, that was, that was disappointing. That was not a great, not a great round for, uh, for our boy here. I think, I think running over to her is not a great idea. Uh, actually, I think it is because I think this guy might run somewhere, and we want to get the sentinel hit in. So we'll we'll go ahead and do that. This this could be this guy does a lot of damage potentially. Oh, okay. Oh, we have a surprise round. Okay. So let's see. We are on Lazelle here, who, like I said, she gets one of these. She gets one of these a go. Oh, I actually got her, the two of them confused. I think. Disarming strike could be could be interesting here. Alright, and then I'm gonna put her here. And then you're at 21, so we're not gonna get the kill with the Shadow Heart. Oh, oh, and also we're not in the mix right now. Uh okay. Ah, good. I'm I'm glad I did this because this gives us. Do I want to just come over to this guy? 
Hmm. I'm not opposed to using a spell here. Um, we could also... So this is insult a creature. It has disadvantage on its next attack roll. We we might save a lot by toshizing this guy. Oh, do we... Are we going to run all the way over to do that? I guess it's okay. I go. All right, that that takes him out of commission, which I think is is going to be good for business. We get back our bardic inspirations on short rest, so I think I will also I'll also do that, and then I'm just trying to conserve spell slots on Shadowheart. So let's let's just get her sorted, and then are you taking a reaction shot? If we move you over here, it looks like you're not. All right, we'll do that so that if this guy tries to run away without disengaging, maybe we'll be okay. I'm a little nervous that I brought everything. I brought our bard over to this guy because this guy does a lot of work. Ah, okay, good. Because of the surprise, we get to keep uh, keep churning. Oh man, Asterion's making me look bad. There we go. Still, still not terrible. Uh, Let's see, I can hide right now, so I will do that. I kind of wish I had gotten a goading strike on this guy. Because he's... Oh, all right. That's good enough. We... Yeah, I can use a goading strike right now. It's okay, so... Lazel used goading, uh, goading attack on a stonemason. Needs a third. Uh, the stonemason needs a thirteen to save. They rolled a seventeen, so we don't need to use cutting words here. She already got a solid hit off. Should have, uh, should have used the the pull. But the 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 cold staff does some work. <laughs> what a lovely laugh. I mean, hard to argue, right? So let's see. So we can we can move like this, and we can get out of the blind. We want to keep uh, we want to keep things going. So we're just gonna. Rank melodorous pustule. Rank melodorous pustule. What can I say? Extremely accurate. Oh, that was a nasty offhand crossbow hit. All right. Uh, the the save on hideous laughter is a bummer, but we'll uh, we'll get a bit of height advantage here. You can say that again in lustrous, but I mean you can see the damage that we're putting out with Asterion now is uh, is significant. Victory awaits. Same, same with our, uh, same with our cleric, even without casting spells. Uh, Listen, you. Even hell's gag on your bedevil stench. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised we didn't get an an, an attack of opportunity off of Lazel there. Uh, that was that was surprising, but but there we go. That was uh, that was a smooth first round there. I've got a long road ahead. We didn't take we didn't take too much damage, but very little of his inventory shows up after you kill him. So doing that extra bit of pickpocketing was uh, was extremely worth the price of admission. I'll sort that stuff out later. And where did the last one die? Ah, it's good died over here. But yeah, we uh, we're a lot stronger now. No one back home will ever believe this. <laughs> um, that is the that is the short version. <sighs> one day I'll catch a break. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep rolling through. Mm. 
And the, these two are our next two victims. These these dots up here are just the Roth, the Rothy. So we, we're not too worried about them. Eager for battle. And generally the way that I think about this is Shadowheart and Lazel are kind of our two tanks. Somewhere in the middle we want uh, we want our bard. And then Asterion kind of stays back and rains down pain. Hey Bray, how's it going? And we always open with uh, with Asterion. So this so so you have a lot of hold on. So you have a ton of AC. Yeah, this guy has a lot less AC and also has a bit more damage from his extra attack. So we'll start out here. <laughs> Bye, Bray. <laughs> you attacked someone. Only the guards are allowed to do that, as this one is about to demonstrate. All right, we will we'll fight you. So we get this extra bonus action from being a gloom stalker. How did this guy not take any damage? Our first attack said that it hit. Huh. Interesting. But you can see the machine gun is is working. <laughs> um. Hey, Rusty. It's it's an amazing game. Uh, highly recommend it. Let's see. If I if I move to here because of extra reach, do you need to? I don't think this is going to be an attack opportunity. So let's just let's just get that guy sorted. Lazel has a long reach, so technically he's still within Lazel's reach. Ah, Mr. Bunny, that actually makes a lot of sense. That's uh, that's very clever. Alright, we're just gonna give her uh, give her some disadvantage. That'll that'll work. And then offhand damage there. You you are now in vision, so let's Let's step you out and hide you. And then you've done all the things. So I guess, I guess if we stand here, maybe she'll. Yeah, that's an interesting. That's an interesting dynamic. I'm gonna move back a little bit to guarantee that we get the opportunity attack if if this guy decides to do anything problematic. But yeah, our, our ranger, our new ranger, former rogue, is uh, is doing some work to be sure. Uh, you're silenced. What path lies before me? I think, I think we just keep uh, keep rocking vicious mockery if we can. Should shouldn't have ended that turn in case we decided we needed to move more. But. What should I do? On my way. Jeez, this 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 is the the toughest Dwegar we've uh, we've encountered thus far. Uh, I am fury. I am death. An argument you made that a a goading strike could be good for business here, but guiding guiding bolt is a spicy uh, a spicy selection there. So that yeah, that was the that was the problem with our with our plan is Lazel's longer reach is actually kind of a, a liability. I think I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to think about that. All right, we can move up, and this should be an easy kill for Asarian. What are they? No time to rest. All right, few new few new arrows for uh, for Asterion. And also, we uh, we don't have any of these metal trunks yet, so send those to camp. Always always excited for new containers. What can I say? I'm uh, I am a loot goblin. Let's, see, let's just send that over there. That goes to you. Now this is the king's knife is interesting. So it is a versatile, can be wielded with both hands. It does one d ten. Minus one 
So it's a long sword equivalent. It looks more daggerish to me, but it's an interesting, an interesting item nonetheless. We'll send all that stuff to camp. Just what I needed is a pair of tongs. All right, and we have quite the pile of relative garbage. Hello, camera. You, you can do it. I, I do love the, the, the picking. I think the picking up range just needs to be extended a little bit. I think that would be a, a good uh, a good adjustment. Herbs go there. All right. So there we go. We got everything out of these. So onward and upward. My mind and, well, in it. Now this guy, this guy would have been, I think, in a very interesting fight uh, if he still had his spiders. We obviously convinced his spiders to shuffle off. So we don't have to deal with them. But the the thing that was more crazy about this area that it took me forever to notice Eager for battle. is An efficient path. is that up here, there's actually like a ledge that you can go over. Um, it is really hard to see that you can get back into this area and there's not a lot. There's like a, there's a little skeleton over here with a, uh, in a in a cage and there's another skeleton here but nothing uh nothing major but it was uh it was quite the shocker when i uh when i realized that and then is there any way for me to get down without taking damage <laughs> All right, i guess we're just gonna take the damage watch your back so we want to hide enter turn base mode and then we are going to open on the sky Someone. Only the gun. Okay, so I just want to check here. So you, yeah, you have taken the damage. It's so weird that that other time, it, uh, it didn't register the damage that we got on that first attack. I think, Time to strike. I think we're going to make short work of this guy, though. Yep. All right. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. And we'll, uh, we'll come back and loot all this after we take out the last two Dwegar that are down here. Now, there's a bit of a, a Hitman-esque dynamic here that uh, you can definitely... This stained cask, you can definitely interact with this, and you can definitely poison these two uh, if you want to. The incredibly disappointing thing about that, though, is if you put a poison in here... Uh, you get no experience for the kills. Which I think is just very strange. Action. So instead of doing that, we are going to... Proceeding. We're going to kill him the old-fashioned way. Keep your distance down. So as to make sure that we're getting, uh, we're getting full value out of it. Whatever it takes. This way. Put her over here. She'll put like her over here, and then. At least things have stayed interesting. I don't think you're going to be doing much. And I'm going to wait for uh, I'm going to wait for uh, Skick Pit to uh, to move out of the way before we unleash our fury. Oops! Did I just? Yeah, I did. Ready or not. Not a great not a great start, Asterian. Uh, let's uh, let's work on that in the future. But boy, when when Asterian hits, does Asterian hit? The the camera is really uh, really fighting with us a little bit. Maybe if I move a little bit over this way. Yeah, the extra attack that you get at Ranger level five is really uh, a difference maker to be sure. All right, we will. 
We'll use our bonus action hide. And I think this is an easy goading strike to make sure that... Because what is, goading strike is disadvantage attacking anyone else, right? Disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than the spellcaster. Yeah, that's, that's pretty huge. We just do that for the damage. Let's turn someone inside out. We're going to be doing a short rest before the main fight. So I think we'll, uh, we'll we'll use up our superiority dice here. I'm doing that mostly for the disadvantage. Oh, 24 crit. Wow. That was spicy. Shit. You did it. What now? Uh, let's see. Uh, go find somewhere to hide. Wait for things to cool down. I know a place. Cross the lake. Should be safe. Won't be needing this poison now that you've off the pricks. <laughs> Bet you'll find it handy, though. You're a good one. I won't forget it. Right on. All right. Right on. All that can get sent to camp. Well, hello. You've you've picked up a lot of a lot of stuff, so we'll do let's just do a quick quick organize here. We have a new arrow varietal, very exciting. And then potions, at least generally speaking, can go there. These wyvern poisons, I don't think they ever stack, which is an interesting an interesting thing, but there we go. All good, and then just while we're while we're cleaning things up. Put that stuff there. Alright. Alright. What now? Magmar's record. Drink won't lead no place good, he said. Excuse me. Scrolls go there. Potions go there. This goes to camp. All right. And then I don't know about this door. What path lies before me? But. So yeah, so we could have we could have poisoned them, but we would have uh, we would have missed out on the opportunity to just murder them. What's in here? We are rich in fish, for sure. Let's see, we got both of those. And then now we just have to do a sweep of this room. Who puts, uh, who lets prisoners hang on to their money? Seems like, uh, seems like an error. Let's see, we got basic poison. I'm going to send those over there for the time being. Hair growth tonic. A bottle of thick liquid labeled Mermath's Property, hands off. Amazing. Huh, Got a blue cap that. over there. Ooh, this is a new arrow too. Arrow of many targets. Ooh, that sounds extremely strong. That sounds like something I want more than one of. <laughs> Ooh, all right, nice little payday here. I wish the metal crates had uh, had an icon that was distinct from the regular crates, but that's okay. 
Let's see. So we have a creased letter. Like a phoenix from the ashes, Grimforge has riven, risen from the dead. I've word of a drow cultist gathering Dwegar in the old city halls. Uh, that the absolute means to recruit them. I've no doubt, yet it's uh, what they might seek amidst the ruins that troubles me most. You've not failed me yet. Go to Grimforge, cling to Shadow, and bring word of the cultist's intentions. And then there's also this engraved pin. A small but detailed pin depicting a harp offset against a crescent moon. So that must be a harper's pin. What an odd emblem. I don't think I've seen it before. You don't think you've seen it before. I feel like we've we've done a bunch of Harper's shenanigans here. Okay, so this point